So tonight I'm going to shoot the Andromeda Galaxy. As you can see, I have the setup outside. I'm almost uh, gonna shoot before. I have the Avogad with the SV165 guy scope. Um, and the Adventure I mount, I removed the pier. So, because it was a bit windy, but I don't know for tonight too if it will be windy. And by removing the pier, you basically lower lower the whole setup out. And when, when you lower this whole setup, you make it less susceptible to to wind. Um, and the 405cc. I have the all associate cables and cooling and stuff and stuff like that. And I'm gonna use sharp cap as usual with 120 second exposures and I believe 150 gain. And we'll do some darks and flats. And hopefully, will be a good night. Um, it's a beautiful, clear night tonight. So, fingers crossed. Alright, so I'm gonna do flats first for the Andromeda Galaxy. Um, I'm gonna try 185 gain and 5 second exposures. I'm gonna test this out. Press start and I'm gonna take dark flats after the search. And hope they work. But as we know now, the 294 is a total pain to make flats for. And I need to cover the aperture now, when it reaches 6 frames. Okay, we're doing dark flats. That's how the flats worked, thankfully. And I'm now uh, doing the polar alignment. So we can start imaging. As usual, you um, turn the, the knobs left and right and up and down according to the areas you have. A bit too far here. You don't need big movements, just go slowly. Because if you go crazy, you will move a lot and uh, you will have to the center. Right, I'm pretty much there with left and right. Alright, that's it. I'm gonna lock the knobs. The side knobs so the mountain doesn't move. And I'm gonna return the mount to the center. The axis I mean. Right, well. You can get out of that. Remove the polar aligning and go to alignment. To start alignment, chop star and uh, I was gonna say solder, but solder is on the other side, I think. I'm gonna check which stars are available because today I started much later than I hoped. 
when the stars have moved in this case so I need to check I'm checking Constellarium at the moment Mirash Um, Markup, where it is. I think Markup is best. No, actually, Markup is horrible. It's on the other side. And if no, Alderamin, maybe. Yes, Alderamin is the best. So today we're gonna. Do the Andromeda Galaxy sites, as I said. I haven't damaged this target in a while. So it's gonna be fun. Mirash. And I'm gonna do the plate solving so Shark can go to the target by itself. Currently plate solving the this spot where it's pointing and then it will go automatically which is this one I believe this is uh, yes, that one okay uh, I'm gonna center a bit more because it's not that centered Okay, next to the next star. Okay. I'm guessing it's this one. to check what uh, what orientation I had last year of Andromeda I'm gonna check by the files I have because I don't wanna imagine and bad orientation and mess up my last year data okay I'm gonna check real quick Should be close because I, I believe the orientation I have at the moment is how it was last year, but I'm not sure. And Cyril is always upside down. They are from on the live stack. Okay, so so this is the ori orientation I had. Um, ignore the horrible bending I have here. It was my mistake. So Andromeda should be like this. Let me see. I'm going to Andromeda. Messier 31. the camera of the guiding here it is Andromeda is pretty easy to find even manually yeah it should be it's pretty close it's a bit off the, the alignment I can see it's a bit off because this is M M32 and as you can see here, it's a bit more tilted, so I have to turn the other way. 
Bear with me. Oops. Wrong way. I believe like this. Yeah, something like this. Okay, centered. A bit more. This is a helpful tip. You can use this tool to see if you are centered a bit. Centered or not. We are centered. Alright, and focus looks pretty good. I think I won't touch focus, it's okay. Now take a test shot just to see. Seconds. Yeah, focus looks fine. Okay, it's good. Man, the focus. I love Andromeda. It's my the, my favorite target to shoot. So beautiful. So okay. Um. Uh, so I'm gonna connect guiding. Start guiding and give the mount some time to settle before I start imaging. And I am gonna go get the the cover of for my aperture. Okay, so set. I've bumped the tripod a bit so. We must stop the guiding a bit, I have to start it again. Because it's important you do some kind of uh, shield for the aperture. Because if your like, neighbor comes up at the middle of the night, it won't mess you up. Because sometimes my neighbor comes up and turns on the lights during the night and uh, it will mess you up. And I'm gonna do 150 gain and 2 minutes exposures. I'm gonna see how that works. Because I'm not sure what gain I'm gonna use. I'm gonna test, test this first. And if it works well, I'm gonna use this, this settings. If it's overexposed, I'm gonna lower it even more. I'm gonna do the every frames three frames for now and then later I will increase it after some files some files come in and these are the settings I'm using 120 seconds 150 gain and 20 brightness or black level black level and brightness are the same Okay, we're gonna see the first sub coming in soon. I think it's overexposed. Actually, it's not bad. The flats haven't worked that well. I thought they were better. It's not bad, but they didn't work quite that well. It's not that big of a deal, to be honest. In, in processing, it won't really matter, because you will extract the background anyway. So this is an hour in on Andromeda, as you can see. Andromeda is very nice to image because since it is so bright uh, you will get loads of details instantly. As you can see these are the 
This is the massive, super massive black hole. These are the outer edges. Uh, this is a famous like star cluster inside Andromeda. This one from the other guide, it looks very faint, but from a big telescope, you will be able to able to resolve stars there. From where it looks like a faint fuzzy inside Andromeda, but you can see the dust lens pretty good here. The dust lens here, you can. You can sharpen as well on sharp cup if you want. Like this, it's a bit sharpened. But yeah, it's a. Uh, FY is awesome. For wide field view, I love this telescope. I'm gonna try to do a full night on this one. I have five hours or more remaining. Hopefully it goes well. Guiding is going well. It's a bit jacked up when dithering, but I have no clue what was causing that. I, I have tightened the backlash and it's still a bit crazy in dithering, but I guess that's normal. But uh, as long as it recovers, it's okay. But yeah, pretty decent guiding. Not that smooth, to be honest, I, I expect better, but it's not bad. But the stars are, are round, so I'm not gonna complain. I will leave it, I'll go to sleep now, and leave it stacking during the night, and we'll, we'll see what we get at the end. As I am ready, I took around 6 hours, I believe. And this is the result I got in six hours. I'm gonna combine this to my last year data, and it will, I'm sure, pop with details. You can see it's pretty, pretty good. Obviously, this is an auto stretch, so it's like green and stuff. It's, it's not normally this way, but. Uh, when I combine with the other one, it would be around 14, 14 hours, 15 hours, something like that. Exposure, which is pretty good, pretty nice. And I can see, I can see Orion constellation rising right now, and the Pleiades, which is the start on the way to winter. The beautiful Orion constellation. Next process is data and show you the final image.